In the previous video, we created some interactive text fields in this electronic form. And in this video, we're going to continue by adding several different types of form fields to the form. If you're following along and you've worked through the previous video, we're picking up right where we left off in the last video, which is with the file membershipworking.pdf, which we saved as a work in progress. If you're just joining us here, you can find this file in the working files in the Chapter 3 folder already created. To get back into form editing mode, we're going to make sure the Tools panel is open and the Forms category is displayed, and we'll click on Edit. This will bring us back into the Forms editing mode. When we're in the Forms editing mode, we see the first tool in the Tasks panel is Add New Field. And clicking this to drop the list down, we can see there are actually eight types of form fields we can add to our form. There's the Text field, which we saw in the previous video. Then there are checkboxes, radio buttons, list boxes and drop down boxes. There are buttons, digital signatures, and barcodes. We're going to review all of these in the next few videos, with the exception of digital signatures. This is an advanced topic, and we have an entire chapter on that subject available in the Infinite Skills Advanced course on Acrobat 11. The next thing we're going to do with this form is to add some checkboxes. We'll zoom into the area where we want to add the checkboxes, and we'll click Add New Field, and we'll select Checkbox. We get a crosshair, and we can drag out a square here to specify the size and location of our checkbox. When we release the mouse button, it asks us for a field name, and we want this one to be called Enroll. We can also click on All Properties, which will launch the Property Inspector so that we can add a tooltip, Check to Enroll in CFO. We can change the appearance if we want to, but we'll leave it at the default. In the Options tab, we can change the style from a typical checkbox to one of several other formats, as you can see here. The Export value is the value that will be returned to us if the box is checked. This is important if we're collecting data from forms that we've distributed. Furthermore, we can select this option to cause this checkbox to be automatically checked. Since most people filling this form are going to want to enroll, we'll enable this option. We'll click on Close, and now we'll add one more checkbox right below the first one. We'll call this one Magazine, and we'll click on All Properties. We'll add a tooltip. Check if you do not want to receive the magazine. We'll click on Close, and just to be precise, we'll click on the first box, and we'll shift-click on the second box. Then we'll right-click on Windows, or control-click on a Mac to bring up the context menu. We'll select Set the Fields to the Same Size, and we'll choose Both. Then we can repeat this. Again, right-clicking or control-clicking, and we'll choose Align, Distribute, or Center, and we'll choose to align vertically to place them one over the other. So now we've got our checkboxes defined, and let's go ahead and add some radio buttons. These are a little bit different. Checkboxes stand alone, but radio buttons are always in a group, and it always takes at least two radio buttons to form the group. We'll click on Add New Field, and Radio button. And we'll come over here in front of the word Small, and we'll drag out one button. It creates a circular button, and in this case there are two options to be filled in. Choice, which is going to be Small, Medium, Large, or Extra Large, and this one in this case will be Small, and then Group Name, and we'll call this Size. This is key because all the radio buttons in the same group have to share the same group name. So we'll call this one Size, and we'll have the choice be Small. Now we could exit out of this and choose the radio button from here again for the next placement, but we actually have a shortcut to add another button right here, and that's very convenient. We'll go ahead and click that and place the second button right below the first. Again, you can see the default here is for the group name to be size, and that's exactly what we want. So we'll set the value here to be medium. We'll go ahead and add another button right below that, and this one will be large. 
Again, this is part of the group size. Finally, we'll add one more button, and this will be extra large. So you can see that this add another button shortcut is very convenient because we didn't have to enter in the group name each time. So now we've got our four radio buttons, and they're a little bit different size and alignment. So we can select the first and shift click to select the last. We'll bring up the context menu, and again, we'll choose set fields to same size, and we'll choose both. Then we'll bring up the context menu one more time, and we'll align, and we'll choose to align vertically. Finally, we'll bring up this context menu again for the third time, and this time we'll choose the same choice, but we'll choose to distribute vertically, which will create equal spacing between the buttons. So there we've got our radio buttons. We'll zoom back to fit on the page. And we have our checkboxes and radio buttons created. We're going to leave this form as is, and we'll pick up in the next video right at this spot. So keep this form open and in form edit mode.